as artificial intelligence creates self-learning machines in the future, then robots will have an even greater place in industry, in the home, and of course in medicine as well. Well, Australia has a long history with robots. Even our now extinct car makers use them. Brick makers use them as well. So too our ports, our biggest warehouses and logistics companies. Even the cameras here in this Sky News studio, you can see here, they're all robots, all the cameras. So this week's National Robotics Strategy from the government is welcome to encourage more manufacturing to bring more of our university's best ideas to commercialisation rather than to disappear offshore. Somebody who's been instrumental to this strategy is Sue Kay, Chair of the Robotics Australia Group and Adjunct Professor at the Queensland University of Technology Centre for Robotics and joins me now from our Brisbane studio. We're no doubt we're using robotic cameras with you as well, Sue. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So just explain this strategy for Australia. I did note one thing, Ed Husick noted, the industry minister this week, that Australia ranks 32nd in the world, which seemed to me to be fairly low, given that we have a natural instinct to use robots in industry and in our everyday lives. Yeah, that, that's right. We, we are very low in the rankings. However, that's also partly because of the mix of industries where we use robots. They don't lend themselves to the use of a large number of robots. But where we do use them in, tends to be in niche applications that are very important. And where we use them probably more so than many other parts of the world are in outdoor environments, such as in agriculture and mining. Uh, where there is, you know, extensive use of, of robots starting to have an impact. So this comes not just from the labour saving side of things, but also from the safety side for farmers and also for miners that have used them for a long time to really take people out of harm's way. Yes, it's safety and it's also the fact that we inhabit a gigantic continent and we only have a small number of people. So there are many tasks that take people into remote areas where it is often very useful to be able to use a robot or a drone to do tasks that, that mean that we don't have to send people out into those remote areas and, and put them in danger. So then take me inside our universities, because quite clearly, throughout industries you talk about, there are drones, there are self-driving trucks, there are self-driving trains in the Pilbara region of Western Australia. We must have skills inside our universities to help develop those type of applications for industry. Yeah, we have a fantastic range of uh, talent and they're developing amazing technologies. Australia was the first country in the world to automate our ports. We're also the first country in the world to automate our mine sites. And all of that automation was based on Australian developed technologies, which unfortunately in some cases were then commercialised overseas. So then the, the strategy of the government, the strategy of the industry minister, Ed Husick, what he's saying now, does that help to try and retain some of that technology, some of that know-how here in Australia so that we can ultimately build a, a robotics base, industrial base here in Australia? Oh, definitely. It's the first step in recognising that robotics is an industry that could be of immense importance to Australia uh, in the future and that we can really make a, a, a mark in the world by um, investing in the talent and technologies that we, we currently already have but arguably aren't making taking the most advantage of. And so I think the other real benefit of the strategy is that we now have a clear direction and a clear mandate from the government that this is an important area and a new industry that is worth developing. OK, so I mentioned at the beginning the integration of artificial intelligence into future robots in all sorts of applications. That's almost a game changer as, as long as those robots start to learn, start to understand and start to interact on their own. That's exactly right. So with generative AI, we have seen uh, an acceleration of the functionality of a lot of robots. It makes it easier for us to design and manufacture robots. It gives them far more capabilities than they had in the past. Uh, AI tools like ChatGPT can actually help robots to communicate much better with humans so that we can actually direct the robot what it needs to do with voice commands and do away with the need for people having to program the robots to get them to do what they want to do. So, as you say, it really is a game changer. 
So do you sense that Australia's future in robotics is actually building the robots here in Australia or is it creating the, the, the IP, as it were, so that that can be sold in other parts of the world where those robots can then be manufactured? I think it's going to be a combination of both because as we are trying to build up our manufacturing base, it makes sense for us to be also building robots. And so uh, I think that there might be instances where it's useful for us to commercialise IP, but we need to make sure that we're actually going to get the long-term benefits of that because uh, at the moment, if we're just developing the IP and then not getting any further value add, I think we're, we're probably not getting the most benefits. But certainly I think we need to be focusing on not just the creation of robots, but also how we can encourage most of our industries to be taking and adopting robots and taking on more automation in their businesses as well so that they can remain globally competitive. Because it becomes a fairly obvious thing that when we have very high wages, then quite clearly we're looking for more productivity. So if robots are integrated into more workplaces, then ultimately that productivity is achieved, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. It can often be very hard to put a business case forward uh, to adopt robotics, but people tend to find that once they have, it doesn't result in a reduction of the size of the workforce, but what it does is actually change the type of work that people are doing. And so there can be more of a concentration uh, that businesses can have on actually, uh, you know, getting more value out of the products, uh, developing new services and products for their customers, and actually just uh, focusing on higher value tasks uh, by letting the robots do a, a lot of the um, lower value tasks. So where do you sense for Australia that the low hanging fruit is to get into that global robotics market? Are there any areas where we already have our skills where we can go to? Yeah, definitely in field robotics. So field robotics are the type of robots that work outdoors in unstructured environments and can safely work alongside humans. And so we are already seeing these, as you've already mentioned, in areas like mining, on our ports, in logistics. Uh, we're also seeing them in defence and in agriculture, in construction. This is an area where Australia actually uh, really has a leading edge in terms of the, the technology that we're currently developing. And I think it's an area where our robotics industry can really grow and scale to good effect. I'll tell you, it's going to be fascinating just to see how this evolves. And I'll certainly come back and have another chat with you in the very near future. Sue Kate, many thanks for your time on the program today. Thank you, Ross.